This is going to be Psalm 20. And we're going to talk about the true king, the king of kings. Psalm 20 and verse 9 says, Save, Lord, let the king hear us when we call. This is King Jesus, the only one who can bring in real peace, the only one who can always make the right decision, and the only one who knows the end from the beginning. This is why he is the king of kings, and here is more reasons why he's the king of kings. Because he is an open ear. In verse 1 of Psalm 20, it says, The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. So the king of kings can hear every saint all day, every day, and is waiting on you to talk to him. He hears you in the day of trouble. However, don't let that be the only day you send up a prayer up to his ears. The day of trouble prophetically is the time of Jacob's trouble. See Jeremiah 30 and verse 7. And that time has to do with the Jews and not the church. Hence why it is called the time of Jacob's trouble and not the time of the church's trouble. But this time of trouble will turn Israel to Jesus Christ. He will give them an open ear. Even though you have offended God over and over with your sin, He forgives you and listens. Uh, maybe America is about to face some trouble. If uh, Joe Biden wins, I, I, I believe things will get worse than they are now. Things are already pretty bad. But maybe this will give America the chance to finally see some persecution. The Christians in this country, we've never saw persecution. And that's a scary thing. But, I mean, you're rewarded for facing persecution and not giving in to the temptation of denying the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord can give you an open ear during that time of trouble that we might possibly face. No matter what you have done, you can still confess your sin, and He'll be faithful and just to forgive you your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And that's to stay in fellowship. He is an open ear in a time of trouble, even if the trouble is the only thing that got you to talk to Him. I bet many people have sent up prayers to the Lord about the election. They haven't talked to him in a long time because they're they're worried that Biden's going to win and that he's going to do all these crazy things. Uh, the Lord may allow trouble to happen because that's the only way he can get some people to, to call on him and seek him. But Jesus Christ is the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. And he hears every single saint when they pray. And next, he's the only defense. He's an open ear, and he's the only defense. Psalms 20, verse 1. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob, defend thee. The king of kings, he's our only defense. The only thing keeping the devil off me is God himself. The only thing keeping bad things from happening to me on every side is the Lord. Building a wall may be good, but it can't keep me safe from everything. Being able to have guns is good, but you can only shoot so many enemies at once. Now, what if a busload of enemies come at you at once? You know, you can only take out so many. The only real defense you have is the king of kings. He's the only king that doesn't need an army, but he has one anyway. And when we come back at the second coming with Jesus Christ... It's not because he needs our help. He's just letting you come along for the ride. It's like when you let your kid tag along for the job. You don't really need them. You just want them with you. But the Lord is your only defense. Notice you wear, uh, you wear a certain kind of armor as a Christian. The whole armor of God. It's of God and not of you. It's the whole armor of God. Uh, some men think, well, I'll run, I'll exercise, I'll punch a punching bag, and I'll get a bunch of guns, I'll move out in the woods. But if God's not helping you, then what's the use? 1 Timothy 4.8 says, Bodily exercise profiteth little. You need the whole armor of God, and that's your defense. Um, God is still in control no matter what happens. In Ephesians 6.12-18 
it talks about our enemies. And it talks about the whole armor of God that we need to put on. And you can read that. And you, you'll see that the armor is of God. It's not of yourself. And you'll see that the war we have going on is not with flesh and blood. It's the spirits that are in certain flesh and blood. But the Lord is our defense against them. Next, he's our strength in Psalms or Psalm 20, verse 2. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. So notice the Jewish tone again of the psalm. The context doctrinally had already put us ahead in the future time of Jacob's trouble. David says, send thee help from the sanctuary. And Revelation 11, 1 shows you that there is a temple worship during the tribulation and the Antichrist sits in the temple claiming to be God as well during the tribulation. Now verse 2 of Psalm 20, Psalms 20 says, send thee help from the, from the sanctuary. In the church age, God doesn't have a temple for his people, but his people are the temple. Uh, see 1 Corinthians 6, 9, 19. 1 Corinthians 6, 19, showing your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And Acts 17, 24 says, The Lord of heaven and earth dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Uh, but practically speaking, if someone lives close to a good Bible-believing church house, uh, they could get help from the sanctuary. There is also access to thousands of Bible-believing sermons online that have been preached in local churches all over the country. The King of Kings is our strength, and he can use these Bible-believing pastors to give you a boost using his words. He says, Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Notice, Zion the Jewish tone of this psalm. You'll see it. But next, the king of kings made himself an offering for sin. He's an open ear. He's our only defense. He's our strength. And he made himself an offering for sin. In Psalms, or Psalm 20, verse 3, Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice, Selah. In the Old Testament, they offered the blood of bulls and goats. But Hebrews 10, 4 says, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Exodus 34, 7 says, Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, upon the children's children, unto the third and fourth generation. So the Old Testament bloody animal sacrifices couldn't clear the sin but only gave temporary forgiveness. They couldn't give eternal life. But the king of kings offered himself. He said in John 10, 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. He is the lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. As John the Baptist said, his blood cleanses us from all sin. As John said, he is an offering for sin. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He made himself an offering for sin. And that's another reason why he is king of kings. Most kings would want you to lay down your life for them. Most presidents would uh, put you in front of them and use you as a human shield. But the Lord Jesus Christ, king of kings, he became your savior. He became the one that died on the cross for your sins. So he is an offering for sin. And he's king of kings because he's our strength, an open ear, our only defense. And the king of kings is on his way back. That's the next thing I'll say is the king is on his way back. Psalm, Psalm 20 and verse 4, Grant thee according to thy own heart. And fulfill all thy counsel. David says, Grant thee according to thine own heart, and fulfill all thy counsel. I, if he's referring to the Lord here, then the thing in the Lord's heart is the Lord coming back. Now, Jesus Christ is still, still sitting on the right hand of God. He hasn't started coming down yet. Uh, it isn't going to be a long trip, because when he's ready to come, uh, you can just blink. He'll be out from the right hand of God to the earth in a blink of an eye. 
because he's much faster than the speed of light, but in the sense that we're getting close to the rapture and the second coming, it's about to be time for him to be on his way back. And when he comes back, he's coming to take over as king of kings and lord of lords, and he will sit on his throne judging right. Anyone who goes against him will pay the consequences as he rules in righteousness with a rod of iron. And the nations that don't come to worship him will, won't get any rain, and their crops will suffer. Uh, the king is coming back, and will meet him in the air at the rapture. And at the second coming, he comes back with us on a white horse. Everyone will bow down at the name of Jesus Christ because he is king. And the king who is on his way back has an outstanding name. Psalm 20 and verse 5 says, We will rejoice in the salvation. In the name of our God, we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. I personally like Trump and Pence, but I'd rather have a banner that says Jesus Christ. Trump Pence sounds like trumpets, so I hope Donald will be the last Trump, but I'd rather have a shirt that said Jesus Christ. I'd rather advertise him than to have a banner that said Trump Pence or Biden Harris. Definitely don't want one that says Biden Harris. But I'd rather have a Jesus rally because at that, at the feet of Jesus, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Uh, we would be in better shape with Trump, but things will not be good until Jesus Christ sits on the throne as a perfect dictator. Trump, he's way better than Biden. Jesus Christ completely overshadows Donald Trump. Uh, he'll make no mistakes. No one will be able to debate him. No one will be able to impeach him because he's king of kings and he's lord of lords. He's king of kings and lord of lords because of his outstanding name. Uh, one of these days, Joe Biden, the Harris woman, and all these people who have all of these evil ideas, such as taking away guns, getting rid of the police, uh, letting eight-year-olds become whatever they want, male or female, they're into the tranny stuff, they love the LGBT stuff. Uh, they got some sick, twisted ideas. One of these days, these God-haters are going to bow down to the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ because he's king of kings, and he has an outstretched hand. In Psalm 20, verse 6, it says, Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven and the saving strength of his right hand. Uh, the anointed could refer to David here. They can refer prophetically to Jesus Christ and practi practically refer to me and you because we were anointed when we got saved. 2 Corinthians one twenty one says, Now he which establishes us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God. But the outstretched hand is a right hand because the left hand in the Bible is negative. When the Lord judges he'll say to those on the left hand depart from me ye cursed into everlasting fire i don't know why you don't pray more and pray without ceasing as paul said because he will hear the lord will hear from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand when peter was singing he said lord save me but immediately in matthew 14 31 it says and immediately jesus stretched forth his hand and called him Jesus is a helping hand. He grabbed Peter by the hand and helped him out. Uh, when fakes see you drowning with your hands sticking out of the water, they just give it a high five. And they're too positive to say, hey, you're drowning, you need help. They're too positive to acknowledge that you're drowning. They'll just give you a high five and let you drown. Just like all these, uh, all, anybody that's corrupt, they make something that's evil to turn out to be positive and look good. They turn evil good and good evil. Like they say, We're, we want to take away your guns. That way there'll be no more mass shootings. How stupid. They're turning something so stupid into something positive. Uh, they say we, the, the, that the gays should, it should just have, a, almost give the gays more rights because, you know, we got to love them. We got to love them. See, it's, we got to be so positive but they're actually corrupt. 
they say, uh, well, eight year old boy should be able to choose whether he should be a man or a woman. Uh, that's the sickest thing I've ever heard. When I was eight years old, you just, I mean, you'd only been putting your own clothes on for a couple of years and not, now you're gonna decide if you need to be a man or a woman. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Uh, okay, so they say a woman should be able to kill, kill her baby, suck the brains out of its head because it's women's rights. Notice they say women's rights, making a lot of women think, well, he, he's just about my rights. He wants me to have my rights. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Think for a minute. Think before you just say things that are crazy. But that's how people do. They smooth things over. They make you think that something's good when it's actually bad. But the King of Kings and Lord of Lords isn't like that. And even though Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, is an open ear, our only defense, our only strength, an offering for sin, on his way back soon, and an outstretched hand, he's still often overlooked. Psalm 20, verse 7, says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Some trust in a mask, some trust in hand sanitizer, some trust in social distancing, some trust in just staying at home, and, and some people overlook the king. They trust in chariots, they trust in horses to deliver them from the enemy. Some trust in tanks, some trust in presidents, and making sure a Republican is in office. They think if Trump wins, everything's going to be all right, but they forgot about the real king. If Trump wins, it may be better, but, I mean, America is still bad. It's still getting worse and worse. He's going to slow the process of things rapidly going south, I believe, a lot more than Biden would. I mean, if Biden gets in there, I just feel like it's just going to go straight downhill. But it's still going to be bad. I mean, I mean, look around. But we need to remember the name of the Lord our God. I hope you can remember the Lord's name better than Sleepy Joe can remember Mitt Romney's name. I hope you can remember the Lord's name better than Biden can remember what he's running for. Or where it's what state he's in. Or what he's even talking about, period. Uh, everyone is going around saying, say his name. Referring to a, a certain person who's been killed by a police officer. Some of the NBA players have wrote on the back of their jerseys, say his name. But they're not referring to Jesus Christ. They're referring to George Floyd. A man who died the same day he was intoxicated behind the wheel of a car, putting everybody else's life in danger. What if he would have kept driving, hit a, a family head on? That guy isn't a hero, but Jesus Christ is. Say his name. He's often overlooked. Who is on the throne of your heart, Jesus Christ or you? Jesus Christ or someone or something else other than God? What is the, what's on the throne of your heart? When you think about your future, are you trying to save money for security or stay right with the Lord? You have to watch out thinking you can do everything on your own strength. God may put something in your path to make you weak so that you will rely on him and won't overlook him. 2 Corinthians 12.10 says, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. He's strong when he's weak because that's when he's leaning on Jesus Christ. So when the flesh, the world, and the devil attack you, don't overlook the king. Call on him because he's king of kings. And a king of kings who next obliterates the enemy. This king of kings obliterates the enemy. He's often overlooked, but he's the one that's going to win in the end. Psalm 20, 8 and 9. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord. Let the king hear us when we call. Isaiah 2, 12. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon every one that is proud and lofty, and upon every one that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. So they are going to hide in the dens and rocks of the mountains, according to the book of Revelation. The enemies of God are going to end up flat on their face because as Galatians 6 teaches, 
And verse 7, Be not deceived, God is not mocked whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Because Proverbs 16, 18 says, Pride goeth before destruction, and in a haughty spirit before a fall. And in the millennial kingdom they will lick the dust or worship the king of kings. Micah 7, 17 says, They shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God and shall fear because of thee. That's because Psalm 20, verse 8, they are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. You can't keep a good man down. The grave won't be able to hold you down if you're saved. You'll stand with Jesus Christ in the millennium and rule and reign with him. Psalm 20, verse 9, Save, Lord, let the king hear us when we call. Jesus always answers the phone. Uh, he never even had to set up a voicemail. He never had to have a caller ID. He always knew it was you. He doesn't put you on hold, and you can't do FaceTime with him yet, but you will soon be able to. 1 Corinthians 13, 12, For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. God hears you when you call, and the book of Revelation reveals how your prayers are kept in vials in Revelation 5, 8. It says, And golden vials full of, full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. How many vials have you filled up? The Lord hears you when you call, and he may not talk back audibly, but he sends you a text message, 66 books full of them for you to meditate on day and night, and you don't have to sit around and wait for him to text back. He's not going to do that to you. He, he, it's not going to show that he read it, and then he just doesn't reply. He gave you everything you needed to hear from him all at one time, wrote down in the, in the Bible. But this has been Psalm 20. And this has been about the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Why you shouldn't worry about who's going to be elected as president. Because Jesus Christ is still on the throne. Jesus Christ is still the winner in the end. And... All these wicked people who may win, they're just going to fall flat on their face and confess that Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords.